Hi there, and welcome to Unit 5, no, Unit 6, uh, where we are talking about exponentials and logarithmic. So we're going to split this unit up into two weeks. We're going to focus on kind of a recall of Algebra 2, um, focusing on properties of exponents and logs, and then we're going to move into how do we solve them and how do we use those properties. So really, this is what we're building towards. Can you solve a question like this? by hand. So right now that question might scare you and that's okay. We're going to build the building blocks in order to solve something like this. So this is the end goal. All right, so this is some recall. These are properties, and they look kind of scary because they're in property format, but um, this is the reality of it is, is these are just simple properties that you probably will recall. Anything raised to the power zero is one. Anything raised to the power one is itself. The negative exponent simply means that you're in the wrong part of the fraction. So if I have a negative exponent up top, that means that truly I'm in the denominator and vice versa. As you can see here, if I'm in the denominator, that means I'm actually in the numerator. So that's all a negative exponent is implying. Here are our uh, multiplication, division, and power rules. So how do I multiply exponents? How do I divide exponents? And how do I uh, take an exponent to another power? And also just a reminder, exponents are roots. So if you don't remember that uh, property, no recall that and kind of work through it. So you will need all this background information in order to continue the solve. So this is stuff you should know. If you need to practice this further, this is my opportunity. I'm warning you now, know this information. So here's the formal definition of an exponent. Uh, these are examples of what an exponent can look like. All of these are correct. The only difference that would not be an exponent would be this. This would be technically a polynomial or a power function or a quadratic, however you want to uh, term that. It would not be part of the exponentials because the exponential functions, the x is in the exponent spot. I was trying to harp on that for you. That's just the big difference. So here are non-examples. Any of these would not be an example. And some of you might say, well, why is one raised to the power X not an exponential function? Well, that's just because it's a funky function. What is one raised to the power of anything? It will always be one. One times itself 300 times will never change. So one raised to the power 300 will still be one. So one raised to the power X will always be one. Okay, so just uh, what we're really focusing on today when we talk about those important vocab word key features. When we talk about key features, we're talking about domain and range, our uh, intercepts, or our roots and our zeros, our asymptotes, our end behavior. And you guys now know that we write end behavior as limits. And if you don't remember that, I've got a recall video for you or image for you. And finally, we are going to talk about in this section, what are the intervals where I'm increasing or decreasing? In case your winter brain lost any of that, here is a recall. Domain is literally what are the x values that a function or expression can exist in. Range is what are the y values that a function or expression can exist in. Our intercepts, if we're talking about the uh, y-intercept, that would be where I hit the y-axis. If we're talking about our roots or zeros or our x-intercepts, it's where I hit the x-axis. Our asymptotes are lines that we can approach but typically don't cross. Um, if you remember from our rational functions, you learn that every now and then we have a funky function where you can cross in the center. But remember, asymptotes are talking about truly the ends. So at the ends, we are not crossing. We're approaching those lines, but we cannot cross them. Okay. Um, end behavior. Again, so on the very end, that's why it's called end behavior. We're not talking about the center. Okay. We're talking about the end behavior. We describe as X goes to positive infinity, what is Y going to? As X goes to negative infinity, what is Y going to? The only time you would talk in the center is if your graph happens to end in the center. Okay. And we write this as a limit. And here we have that notation, the limit as X goes to negative infinity. That's the left end. What is your Y value doing? Am I going to positive infinity? Infinity? Am I going to negative infinity? Am I approaching an asymptote and becoming a real value number? Those are our limit and behavior. And finally, if a function has an increasing or decreasing behavior, this one is very clearly increasing. We would describe the interval that this function is increasing over from left to right. Well, this interval is increasing. Well, there's our, sorry, here's our end behavior. Here we go. Increasing, decreasing. This function is increasing from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. Ooh, what did that do? All right. To positive infinity. And so that's how we would describe increasing, decreasing. Uh, on this one, 
I am increasing from negative 5 to negative 2. I'm constant from negative 2 to 1. I'm increasing from 1 to 3 and decreasing from 3 to 5. And so that's how you would write your intervals. Um, just a real quick recap over here. If you were re, re if you needed a review of limit behavior with a real world example, here my limit as x goes to positive infinity, so the right hand side of the graph, my y value is also going to positive infinity, so that's why we wrote this side. On the left side, my limit as x goes to negative infinity, the left hand side, we're actually not continuing down to negative infinity, we're approaching a real number and that real number is zero at the y value, so that's where this zero came from. All right. Um, just a brief synopsis of concavity. We call these our smiles or our frowns. So you guys have noticed that not all lines are purely li uh, linear. They're not just a line. They can have a curve. And so that's what we call concavity, um, a concept that you would use in calculus more often than in pre-cal, but just know that that is part of your key features. And so uh, we will start kind of noticing it. We'll recognize it more at the end of this semester than the beginning, but I thought I'd introduce it right here. All right, so let's say I want to graph this function, uh, f of x is equal to 4 to the power x. Well, if I have a graphing calculator, great. I plug it into the graphing calculator, I answer my question, and I move on. But let's say this is on the non-calculator portion of an exam, or you just need to roughly sketch it to answer a secondary question. Well, if I was given a table of values, then I could plot those points, graph it for myself, and then analyze the function, which is really what this question is asking us to do, is to describe its domain, its range, intercepts, asymptotes, and behavior, and increasing, decreasing. So we're doing a key feature recap. Very fun. So I take that table and I plotted it. It's as simple as that. I plotted each point, I connected the dots, and now I get to describe the domain, the range, blah, 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 all my key features. Well, if I look at my domain, where can the x exist? All the way to the left, it looks like it keeps on going, so my domain exists from negative infinity. What about to the right? Well, if I extend this arm out, I notice that even though it's a sharp incline, I'm still continuing out as x goes to positive infinity. So my domain Domain is all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. What about my range? Looking at my y now, okay, well, I go continuously up, so I have a positive infinity, but down here, there's a, there's a stop. I don't go any further down than zero. So my range goes from zero to positive infinity. Uh, that would, that's it. It's as simple as that. Intercepts. Do I have any x-intercepts? Well, it looks like I'm approaching the x-axis, but I don't know if I'm necessarily hitting it, so I'm going to say probably not, but there is very clearly a y-intercept occurring at y equals uh, 1 or occurring at 0, 1. Either is an acceptable answer. Just the number 1 is not an acceptable answer. You need some more evidence beyond that. Uh, intercept occurring at y equals 1 or something. You need some more evidence beyond just the number 1. Is there an asymptote occurring? Yes, we, sorry, I didn't mean to continue forward. Yes, we see an asymptote is occurring right here. Some people might guess that an asymptote is occurring here. Well, I'm here to remind you that the behavior of an exponential function is to continue on in that direction. So this is not an asymptote right here. It will continue this way. You're just zoomed really far in. If you looked at that f or four to the x function and zoomed all the way out, you'd begin to see the right right hand continuing on. But down here, we do see an asymptote occurring. I can approach zero, but I cannot touch it. So there is an asymptote occurring at the x-axis, or uh, you could call that uh, y equals zero, right? And then um, end behavior, I could write my limit as x goes to positive infinity, what is f of x going to? And my limit as x goes to negative infinity, what is f of x going to? And that would be um, this side is going to zero, and this side is going to positive infinity. And finally, is it increasing or decreasing? Well, it looks like it's increasing because I read my graph from left to right, uh, so I don't need a decreasing interval, and my interval of increasing literally goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Remember, you write your intervals in terms of your x values, not your y. Just as a recap, here's my correct answer. Great, we got all the right answers. So guess what? It's your turn to do. You get to answer a question on Moodle.